We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice. And share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Well, today we are in Aro County where we are visiting an old friend, Charles Koraru. We want to see how he's been getting on since the last time we shaped him up. Now, Charles has a thriving cattle business. Now, four years ago, he had two cows, but today he has 29. Let's see how he's been getting on and even make him a better farmer. Mm -hmm. So, let's go meet him. When we were last here, we learned how Charles' cows can improve his crop. How rotating crops can get better yields and which maize varieties to use. We also learned about insurance and lit up the local school. So how have you been doing since the last time you were here? Ah, uh, all good. The maize are doing good. Is this the Simba, right? Yeah, this is it. Oh, so how is it doing? It's doing good uh -huh. and great. So how about conservation agriculture? I'm really practicing it. So what can we do for you this time? Uh, this time around, I'd want to something to do with the livestock. Uh, to be able to get uh, the best uh, bulls uh, because we use sex, sex semen mm -hmm. so we would want to have the best so that we can have uh, good cows and also to get good cows with good udders that can mm -hmm. give me, me a lot of milk. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And where else can we help? I'm also trying uh, uh, getting into uh, uh, chicken poultry. I want to try my hands on uh, layers. Wow, Naomi. Yes. Charles Shamba is doing well. Yes, it is. But he still needs some help. And he's got lots of new ideas we'd like to introduce to him. Charles wants to get into the layer business, and we have the perfect person to help him on the way. And after all his hard work at the school, we have a surprise in store for him. But first, it is important to get us off to a good start. That means breakfast. We'll be making breakfast with me and Charles. And I'm going to get an expert for Charles to help him expand his cattle business. Uh -huh. So when breakfast is ready, I'm going to call you. I'll be right there, Naomi. Okay. I'm wondering what Charles and his workers have for breakfast. They have so much work to do. But do they have enough energy to do it all? Angela from FAO is here to advise on how to fuel up for a full day's work. Mm. So Charles, what are you cooking? I was making a, a cup of tea for my boys. Mm -hmm. uh, we've just started the day, mm -hmm. so we want to make a cup of tea right. as we continue with the day's work. How important is breakfast, Angela? Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You need mm -hmm. to make sure that you have a very heavy breakfast each and every morning. And it is also because your workers are going to work and they need a lot of energy so as to be able to go through the day. Mm -hmm. When your breakfast is not strong enough, your workers will not be able to produce enough in the farm. Mm -hmm. So what about nutrition? You know, like I noticed uh, Charles is just making tea. Is that enough? Tea only is not enough for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You need to have a breakfast that has enough carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. It has enough protein and it has some vitamins and some minerals. And of course you need water as you start your day. Therefore, mm -hmm. tea alone is not enough. Mm. So what kind of foods would you recommend for breakfast in this case? Uh, first, we recommend that you are able to use the foods that you are producing in your farm and you don't have to go to the market to buy expensive foods. I can see you are producing some sweet potatoes, so that would be a good option for your breakfast. I also mm -hmm. saw that you have some hens, therefore I can presume that you have some eggs that you are producing. Mm -hmm. That can also be added to the breakfast because eggs are very good in protein. And also you have some cows and they are producing enough milk, therefore we need to make sure that your tea has enough milk. Normally, it is recommended when you're making your tea, you need to have a ratio of one to one. I saw you're producing some popos. So mm -hmm. we are going to also accompany our breakfast with some popos. And popos are very rich in vitamin A. 
-hmm. The fruits that are yellow or orange in color have a lot of vitamin A and purples also have some roughage that helps to prevent constipation and it will help the food to be digested very well in the stomach. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this and this applies also to children, doesn't it? And it is very important for children to also have a balanced diet, especially in the morning. Children, before they go to school, they need to eat a heavy breakfast so mm -hmm. that they are able to concentrate in school. You mm -hmm. find that children who don't eat a good breakfast are not able to perform very well, but those who eat a heavy breakfast, they are very active in school and they perform well. Therefore, a good breakfast is important for the whole family. So, can we cook? Yes, sure. We need to go to make a healthy breakfast and all the items are ready. Angela shows us how to make a very healthy breakfast using things that Charles has on his farm. First, we fry onions and tomato in a little oil and then add some eggs to make a vegetable omelette. While the omelette is cooking, Angela steams some sweet potatoes to make a healthy energy snack. Don't forget the popo. Fruit is very important for vitamins and a healthy body. Now let's see how this great breakfast tastes. Wow. Mm. Mm. This is good. Mm -hmm. What exactly mm -hmm. is this? This is egg made with uh, tomato and onions mm -hmm. uh, together with the sweet potatoes. Wow. And then escorted with a cup of tea. Really? Oh. And make sure you still remember to have your popo for oh. your vitamins. This must be a very lovely break. Good, good yeah. vitamins. Yes, this yes. Is yeah. Good vitamins. Oh, oh, oh. Now we are going to get the workers in here to have their healthy, healthy breakfast. Mm -hmm. And they're coming straight from the shamba. I think they went to the shamba very early. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the first thing should they do before they start eating? Before you set yourself on the table to eat, make sure you clean your hands. It is very important for hygiene to go and wash your hands before you start eating your food. So make sure they pass through the tap and make sure there is some soap for them to scrub their hands, clean their hands well, dry them, and then they can come and start eating. So Angela, what other kinds of foods are you know suitable for, for breakfast? You can have your porridge maybe made from millet or made from sorghum, but you can also have uh, your leftover food that maybe yesterday night you cooked some food mm -hmm. and you had some leftover. Mm -hmm. As long as it is covered and stored well over the night in the morning, you can re-eat and eat your food. Yes. Is it also good to have ugali in the morning? It is very well to have ugali in the morning. For example, ugali is a starch. That's a carbohydrate. It gives you energy. You can have it with a cup of milk, which is protein. So that will give, uh, will enable your body to grow well. And remember your fruit. Maybe if it's the season for mango or if it's the season for popo, make sure you have a slice to meet your uh, vitamin needs for the day. Wow, yes. now we've eaten very well. Very good breakfast. What do you think, Charles? Ah, this is a good starting. Good. Now so we have the energy to start the day. Good, as then go meet our expert from Coopers. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Okay. Last time we showed Charles how to grow more food for his dairy cows using crop rotation. Charles now wants to know how he can get the best semen to improve his herd. I've looked at the calves and uh, they look nice. Charles, you've done a uh, very uh, wonderful job. Thank you. Um, but there are some things we should uh, actually correct. If you look at this calf here, there's some kind of diarrhea. Yeah. And uh, I looked at that. Mm -hmm. That could be coming from feeding, yeah. especially the hygiene part of it. The floor is wet. This predisposes the animals to infections. Because if, you, if you, uh, the calf stands here for long, we'll be experiencing some problems with the foot foot problems like foot rot and foot abscesses. So you need to clean this floor and also disinfect. If you disinfect this floor, then that means your, hair, your calves are staying in a good environment and also where they stay, you need to make sure that it's completely dry. At 14 months, your, your heifer should be weighing around 350. That's the ideal time to do the first service. To get a good, good calf, what should a farmer do? To get a good calf, that means you have to look at your breeding. Let us now go to the cows and see what characteristics of cows our farmer would love to have. Let's go. When you started dairy farming, I'm sure you had, you had a vision of what particular kind of cow you want. What, what did you have in mind? Uh, particularly, I wanted a, a Holstein cow, big 
uh, but later on I realized that was not the right way. Are there specific areas you'd like to improve on? Yeah, I want to have the best cows, particularly what we are doing, this is a milk business, so I want to have cows, cows which can produce good milk. The first thing is choosing correct and the right uh, bull for you. The key pointer will be milk production and what you call persistency. That animal is supposed to produce a lot of milk for a very long time. The catalog will assist a system and including a professional who, is, uh, who can actually give uh, technical information on that. This is what we call a bull catalog mm -hmm. and it will help the farmer to actually know and decide which bull to use, considering the characteristics he already have in his farm. Uh, like for example, if this is the cow you want to breed, we look at the back line, it's not straight, and this will come with uh, some, uh, some challenges here and there. So if you look at the ramp, there's something called ramp angle, then we need to correct that in this cow. Also, the other is not so good, so we look at the other again. And also the rear legs, that is uh, the hind legs, you look at the placement or the positioning of the legs, and that is where you, you correct because you don't want to transfer the same traits to the next generation. You'll be still having the same problem even five years later. Uh, we have good quality semen from uh, Coopers called CRV. When you come to uh, us, we'll guide you and give you the right choice. That is the right bull for your, your herd. To get the best calves to grow your dairy herd, you need to keep records so you know when you should breed your cattle. Cows come on heat every 18 to 21 days. And if you know when to expect the heat, you can be ready to serve the cow with the best semen. It's called Dairy Farmer Record Book, which is supposed to help the farmer keep all the records in his farm. For example, you put in the name, the date served, the repeat if there is any repeat, and then the AI bull used, calving date and the sex of the calf. So with this, you are able actually to come up with a breeding program and also uh, if you have somebody who will assist you in the farm, a professional, then he's able to guide you using your records. Good. Now finally, these two booklets are very, very important. How can our farmers get access to them? Let them just come to uh, uh, our um, distributors or coopers and they'll access the books. We, are, we, have, we have this business countrywide and uh, the books are available for, for farmers mm -hmm. and even the information they need, we always give them. So we've seen how important it is to start your day with a good breakfast. And how to breed cows. Yes. Last time you were here, Charles gave us some excellent ideas. And let's see if he still has some more. Uh, what I would like to encourage my fellow farmers, livestock farmers, is to grow boomerods around their homesteads, whereby you can grow even an acre or two acres. Uh, it has a lot of nutrition value for our livestock, mostly on dairy farming. If it's, uh, we have good rain, it can be, uh, give you about 120 to 250 bales, whereby you can keep them in a store even for six months to one year. Now me, I know you love grass. Yes, don't you? Of course I do. I've got something for you. Oh, wow, wow. Right? Wow. She's Thank excited, you. isn't she? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Coming up after the break. Charles gets going with players. And we see how the school kids are getting on. If you'd like to receive all our Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word all together with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this Shamba, SMS the name of the farmer together with your name and address to 30606. <laughs> Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are back in Narok with Charles. We've been working hard after a good breakfast and we now know how to get good calves. But Charles has more ambitions on his farm and he thinks he can make more money. Chickens may be the way forward. Ken Chick are here to take Charles through the business management of layer chickens and see how they can help. So it is a very viable business uh, opportunity to do layers. One, you require a very small large space for you to do go into this business. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, the cost of a chick is 100 shillings per one chick from Ken Chick. And then you require two kilos of chick mash, uh, uh, which you're supposed to feed for eight weeks, and then eight kilos of growers. 
after which now you go into layering period when you start collecting eggs after four and a half months. Each and every day from 500 bats, you are going to get 16 trays of an egg. X. So if a tree is going for 300 shillings, you'll be able to get 4,800 shillings every day. If you minus the cost of feeding these chicks, which is a bag of feed, every day at 3,000, you'll be able to make a profit of 1,800 shillings every single day. In a month, that will translate to approximately 50,000 every month. So it's a very viable business uh, for any farmer. Uh, according to your calculation, if I'll make about uh, 16 trays in a day, that uh, implies that uh, is about four, 480 uh, birds that will be laying eggs in every day. Uh, uh, can you be sure that you'll be getting that? Yeah, you'll be sure because one thing we as Kenchi give you a very good breed that you'll be able to get above 90% production. And secondary, for you to be able to take care of the diseases, the secret is in vaccination. So when you have your bag vaccinated, which comes at a little uh, cost of three shillings per bag, you'll be able to be well covered just in case the disease comes, your investment will be secure. Do you have your people in the field? Mm. Kenchik has a, an entire team, a technical team, mm -hmm. whose sole duty is to visit farmers and also offer advice, technical advice, and able to visit them and give uh, tips on how to improve on production, how to ensure they take care of the bird and get eventual, they're able to realize the profit. The beauty of the breed we have at Kenchik, when you start getting your eggs, this should continue for a minimum of one year and a maximum of two years. So at least for 18 months, each and every single day, you'll be getting good production and getting your profit. Do you think you'd want to do it? Uh, I'll give it a try. Bring we have a hundred birds for, for me, start. so we can oh, start today. Good start. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let yeah. me go fetch the chicks for you. Ah. Okay. Kariz and his team had built a brooder for the chicks that Patrick had brought. So what can Charles here do you know, to make them healthier and um, so they can start laying as quick as possible? Today is the first day. Yeah. At the hatchery at Kenchik, we yeah. vaccinated the chicks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, again, is uh, Newcastle and Malek, so yeah. they already vaccinated the yeah. chicks we have here. When the chicks alive, like they came here, yeah. mm -hmm. we did it to have water with vitamins mm -hmm. and liquid paraffin. Yeah. So right. you give that for the first four days. Yeah. After which now you wait for the tenth day, yeah. when you come in with the vaccination and you vaccinate again is Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after vaccination, mm -hmm. you need to come in and give vitamins. Yeah. So that you take care of any possible stress. Yeah. And you also insist that you avoid as much as possible mm -hmm. to stress the bud yeah. after vaccination. This yeah. gives a better vaccine reaction. Okay. The first 21 days are usually very essential for these chicks because mm -hmm. this is the time you need to provide them with feed, mm -hmm. water and warmth. That mm -hmm. is brooding for you. Mm -hmm. For this duration, they are going to be on chick mash mm -hmm. for the first eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Then from the ninth week all the way to when they start laying, mm -hmm. they should consume growers mash. Yeah. When you are changing from chick mash to growers, and mm -hmm. again from growers to layers, mm -hmm. it is important that you do it gradually. Yeah. Layers come to point of lay at 18 weeks, and then lay eggs up to two years after that. But then right. for the 18 uh, weeks, I'll be putting in. Spending. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be then spending. After, in, yeah. And then after uh, 18 weeks, it's now coming back. You just start oh. getting the profit. It always come back. Like it always break. come back. Yeah. A lot uh -huh. of money now. Okay, a lot of money. Yeah. So the 18th week is the time now to open your bank account. Oh, oh okay. right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Layers sound like a great business, and Charles has a hundred birds to see how it goes. We have what we call. Charles loves teaching the next generation of farmers. Last time we were here, we installed some solar lights to help them do better. So, we are heading down to see how the class is getting on. Do you like the lights? Yes. It's been very helpful? Yes. Tell Anne about the experience. It's helped us at night to read. So now what time do you read at night? At 6 to, to 9. Oh wow, so three more hours every night. That's from 6 to 9. Yes. So Teacher Margaret, that's yes. very good feedback. And what other uses uh, do you have for the lights apart from the extended study time? We also had, they called it Kasmat. Oh, yes. <laughs> we are using it in our dormitory. Okay, thank you children. So we, remember we will be coming back at the end of the year to see how you performed, okay? It's time for us to get back to the farm. Daylight has brought Charles a surprise and is waiting for us back at the shamba. 
Charles, how do you like your surprise? This is very wonderful. Uh -huh. I didn't expect this. Actually, my store is usually very dark, and sometimes it becomes very hard for me to work in here. Yeah. This is wonderful. This light has two settings. So it has a lower setting which is on for about eight hours and there's a higher setting which is what we've put right now. You can see the room is very bright which will run for up to four hours. So that's four more hours of productivity and it's all solar powered. All you need to do is fix this on the roof of your barn and we just have to fix it here and you can see we connect it there. Sure. And you're able to charge this. So Anne, what are the benefits of using this lantern? One of the things that is different from uh, with the other daylight lanterns is that these, with this you're able to charge your phone directly from the solar panel and it's very easy. So um, what we have with the other daylight products is you charge your phone either from the battery or from the light itself with some cables. But with this you're able to carry this around with you, that is the panel or you just leave it on the roof and you're able to charge your phone. I think it's a great idea that mm -hmm. I can always be keeping it next to my, to me in the pickup and I can be charging as I'm going around the farm. True. Don't use your phone when driving. Yes. I think that Safety is faster. a good idea, but also this is good because <laughs> you can charge and talk because it's not power. Electricity yes. can <laughs> short circuit you, but this cannot. Great! Charles has a good life for his store and a fast way to charge his phone. Speaking of phones, Naomi was going to check if any SMSs have come into Aishamba. I better go and find her. Ah, there you are, Naomi. I've been yes. looking for you. What are you doing? Well, I'm testing one of our farmers. Ah, uh -huh. good. Would you like extra airtime? Oh, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. And also take part in a nationwide survey. Survey about what? Well, you can join Geopol. Geo Who is Geopol? Geopol is a company that conducts nationwide surveys about mm -hmm. anything. Right. And you know what? You also get free airtime. Free airtime? Yeah. Oh, let me start right away. Good. So uh -huh. simply SMS yes. the word join right. to 70555. Uh -huh. Right. And then you'll be registered with Geopol to be uh -huh. part of a nationwide survey. Wow. Your voice will be heard, Naomi. It's time for us to say bye to Charles. Let's go find him. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. 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 So, Charles, did you enjoy the shepherd? Oh, very much. So, what did you learn? I've learned a lot on uh, my dairy cows, how to improve on uh, a better yielding cows, also to have better calves, mm -hmm. uh, and not to forget the chicken, the chicks that you have brought. Yes. Now yes. that's a new business I'm going into, right. which is very good for me. Yeah. So Charles, what are you going to do with all that knowledge? I'm going also to help the community around me. We have the school, mm -hmm. uh, we will have to invite them here, we have to teach them a bit of agriculture on livestock and crop rotation. Mm -hmm. And I hope yeah. the students or the pupils will also learn how right. to have a good breakfast so mm -hmm. they can have a good day all day in school. That's good news. And you too can learn a lot from us by keeping in touch with us by calling our call center. So Charles, are you going to be calling us? Of course, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. see you in the next chamber. Bye. If you like more information, please send us your name and address to the number 30606 and Shamba Shape Up will send you a leaflet like this. Are you a farmer like me? Do you want to smile all the way to the bank? It's simple. Just get all your answers from iShamba by just SMSing the word JOIN to 21606 and they will call you any day any time. Shamba Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Shamba Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Shamba Shape Up is also on Twitter at Shamba Shape Up.